turn to what everyone's talking about, the official end of Pope Benedict XVI's ministry as the leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. Terry Hegarty has more on the pontiff's legacy. The final days of Pope Benedict XVI's papacy were very busy as he forged new ground, showing the world how a pope says goodbye. On Sunday, he held his last public audience, waving to the crowd from his window. Three days later, on Wednesday, in front of throngs in St. Peter's Square, he prayed the Our Father. And blessed the crowd as part of his last public appearance as Pope. Pater et filius et spiritus sanctus. Then, late Thursday afternoon, he left the Vatican and flew by helicopter to Castel Gandolfo, where at 8 p.m. Rome time, he broke with centuries-long tradition and officially resigned as Pope, taking on the title of Pope Emeritus. He may also now be referred to as Roman Pontiff Emeritus. Less than two hours prior to the pontiff's stepping down, Bishop McDonnell celebrated the daily 1210 Mass in St. Michael's Cathedral. The Mass was offered for Benedict's intentions. More than 150 of the local faithful attended and prayed for the outgoing Pope. No Pope will ever be perfect, but we pray that all will be as concerned for God's people as was Benedict. The first pope to resign in nearly 600 years, Benedict accomplished much in a short time. As one of the oldest popes ever elected, he served as the Holy Father for just under eight years. He was elected in April 2005, following the death of John Paul II. Dr. Martin Peon from the College of Our Lady of the Elms in Chicopee says that Benedict's decision to resign will be part of his legacy. He experienced an awful lot with regard to the illness of Pope John Paul II, and so I think he understood things differently. And uh, I actually see that as a valuable contribution on his part to the overall psyche of the papacy. Well, we're certainly now in a new era, an era where we recognize that people can live long, and so I think what the Holy Father has done is historic but it's also, of course, set a precedent for future popes who may face the same uh, situation. Dr. Pion says that Benedict's legacy will be tied to that of his predecessor. He is certainly going to always be, at least to some extent, in the shadow of John Paul II. Um, his uh, personality was much more reserved. He was a shy person, so uh, even though he traveled extensively, uh, people don't necessarily have the same perception of him or even the same recall of what he did on his various uh, international trips. One of those trips included a stop in the United States in April of 2008. When he visited Yankee Stadium, Real to Real was there covering the event. Before he became Pope Benedict, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger was most well known for serving as the head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. In that role, he was called God's Rottweiler by some for his staunch defense of Catholic doctrine. Pope Benedict faced many challenges when his papacy began, perhaps chief among them the filling of the very big red shoes of John Paul II but he confidently charted his own course, attempting to deal with the rampant secularization in Europe and North America and the clergy abuse crisis. He made extensive efforts toward interfaith dialogue and was more recently plagued by the Vatileaks scandal. As Pope, Benedict's writings inspired the faithful. Pope Benedict was a teacher, an academic teacher, a brilliant mind who really uh, analyzed uh, our theology he was a major figure in helping the Vatican Council to, to define church teaching and express it in ways that are relevant to the modern age. His most well-known papal writings came in the form of his encyclicals. 
I, I find it really interesting that he is going to uh, spend the rest of his life uh, devoted to prayer and reflection and meditation and spiritual, perhaps spiritual writing, because his encyclicals really moved in that direction right from the very beginning. Father Bill says that Benedict stayed very busy moving the church forward. I suppose that maybe people in the pews didn't look at him as a beloved pope as much as his predecessor. But I think history will judge uh, the things that he did in his relatively short papacy were very, very significant. Dr. Pion says he thinks that Benedict may continue to have an impact as Pope Emeritus through his future writings. He will initially be doing those writings at the Papal Summer Villa in Castel Gandolfo, where he will reside until renovations are complete in a monastery in Vatican City.